Uh, thank you, Natalia. And I think the next presentation should be mine. Yes, please, uh, Irina. According to uh, the problem. So I, I should stop. Uh, uh, yes, please. Uh, um, so uh, I'm connected can... uh, through a um, uh, smartphone, so uh, there will be no presentation, but um, I will offer you to um, try uh, one of uh, the art development techniques. And while I will start talking about um, what this technique is about and uh, uh, what for I um, elaborated it, I would like to you to ask uh, to prepare uh, a sheet of paper and uh, something to draw, uh, maybe uh, a pen, a pencil, or maybe you have something colorful. Uh, while you are preparing your materials, I will start talking. Uh, integration of migrants into accepting communities uh, is uh, one of the most important uh, issues uh, in um, citizenship education. Highly qualified migrants uh, tend to experience a range of uh, psychological challenges due to professional downshifting and necessity to acquire new skills very quickly. Uh, difficulties in finding a uh, um, job corresponding to the level of qualifications uh, can lead to depressive states of uh, different deg degrees. Anna Maria has already mentioned in her lecture in the beginning that um, um, these depressive states can be really very, very deep and uh, can uh, lead to inevitable uh, um, consequences. Uh, uh, those highly qualified migrants uh, uh, who were forced to change place of living due to war risks uh, um, can also experience temporary decrease of um, cognitive abilities and emotional disadaptation and um, uh, other uh, issues uh, 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 which, um, um, which are connected to post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, groups of psychological support uh, can prevent uh, deep uh, depressive states and enhance emotional adaptation. As a consequence, highly qualified migrants are able to contribute uh, uh, much more effectively to accepting communities by realizing their skills to the full. In order to contribute into psychological support of Ukrainian highly qualified migrants, uh, um, uh, Non-governmental organization Center for Personal and Social Transformations, which was uh, registered in Ukraine in 2020 and uh, which uh, I lead, uh, launched uh, an online project, uh, World Roads, uh, with uh, online meetings every Sunday. Our development sessions uh, last for two hours, up to two hours. Um, sometimes uh, a bit they are a bit shorter and consist of drawing algorithms and modeling a solution of request, which is usually a resource or goal with baking foil, a colored plasticine or modeling clay. In general, art development sessions help migrants to containerize intense emotions and find solutions to problems in complicated life situations. Uh, participants of uh, art development uh, sessions uh, come through art development transformations. Art development techniques elaborated by me mostly concern resources and identity. Uh, Anna Maria also mentioned the uh, um, identity in her lecture, and uh, I would also um, I would like also to say that. Um, um, Mm, mm, these uh, challenges of identity of uh, uh, who am I question is uh, um, very, uh, can be very traumatic for migrants. Uh, so they can have uh, depressive states not only because of uh, this uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, but also because of uh, problems with adaptation and uh, identity. Mm, mm. A destabilized identity. I, I would not like to go deeper into um, um, clinical psychology, but uh, it, is, uh, um, it is often and it is uh, 
largely about identity. And uh, as a consequence uh, um, of art development um, um, uh, uh, sessions, uh, um, uh, the solution of a request comes out from subconscious as an insight. Art development techniques through awareness of uh, feelings, emotions, uh, states help adult people uh, to see changes uh, from the point of opening perspectives for development. And now I would like to offer you to try art development technique uh, um, wish hand. Uh, uh, this technique is very simple and uh, um, you can uh, uh, do it uh, 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 even uh, uh, if you uh, want to, um, uh, to uh, um, find some solution in a uh, situation not that much dramatic as uh, migration, because uh, I, I say that it can be useful because all of us now live in the, in the world which is uh, um, very fragile and quite unpredictable and uh, uh, the level of uncertainty is very high and um, making decisions only rationally can be misleading and it can be uh, very uh, useful to um, go uh, to uh, subconscious and uh, seek uh, a possible solution there. Uh, it doesn't exclude uh, uh, rational decision making, absolutely not, but it is rather supplementary. Uh, so now, uh, wish hand is uh, an art development technique uh, which suits uh, for adults who experience crisis of identity or middle age crisis, which is also about identity. Uh, such crises are especially sharp among highly qualified migrants. Uh, now I would like to ask you uh, to ask you to um, ask yourself uh, questions. Uh, such um, existential questions like uh, uh, what kind of life of life do you want uh, to live? Do you really want to live? And uh, what do you want to hold in your hands uh, in uh, such life which you want to live? And probably while you are thinking over these uh, quite uh, deep existential questions, you can uh, already start looking for solution inside you and uh, um, trace uh, uh, your hand uh, on a sheet of paper situated vertically. So it can be like this. Uh, Trace the shape of your hand. Just uh, <clears throat> draw it like this. It shouldn't be perfect. Mm -mm. It can be like uh, it will be. And then you will be able to make it uh, more mm, nice for you. Yes, great. Uh, Andrea, thank you for sharing. And now play, uh, please take, uh, um, if you have something colorful, it would be great. But if you don't have uh, anything colorful, you can uh, uh, add colors later. And now please add uh, simple geometric forms uh, like uh, circle, oval, uh, square, triangle, and also you can add lines and uh, uh, consider that every geometric form uh, bears meaning of what uh, you want to hold in hands in life uh, uh, which you want to live. As I have already mentioned, it is preferable to use colored pencils, but um, you can use whatever you have.
If you are willing uh, to draw a geometric form without understanding what meaning it can uh, um, contain, it is possible. Uh, please draw it. Understanding of the meaning can come later. Uh, you can also write uh, uh, meanings of geometric forms on the drawing, or you can write this meaning somewhere else. And while you are drawing, uh, I would also like to mention um, that um, um, personally, I prefer to use colored pencils, and it is also very important um, how soft they are. Because when you use colored pencils, uh, um, you need uh, to um, make um, um, movements which are very similar. And you hear the sound of these movements and it helps you uh, together with color, which you use, it helps you to go deeper into your subconscious. Color is very important on this stage. With this technique, it is very um, difficult um, to harm yourself. It is quite uh, safe in psychological sense. Uh, it is also possible definitely to use markers uh, and um, something else uh, which uh, um, has color, but uh, every material has its effect on, um, on your psyche. And while analyzing drawings, it is important to pay attention on personal meanings of colors. And I think that uh, um, those who uh, play this game now, it has already drawn something, uh, but uh, sometimes participants of um, these online meetings, uh, um, migrants, uh, uh, they say that uh, uh, after they draw um, a hand and filled in uh, uh, with geometric uh, forms, they don't like it. <clears throat> and in such cases, <coughs> I um, offer them to draw another hand the way they like it. So I would uh, appreciate a lot if uh, somebody of you <clears throat> would share, but please keep in mind uh, that uh, uh, this video recording uh, will be in public. So don't share everything too personal. Uh, These online meetings, uh, um, I, uh, um, Mm, take screenshots and uh, uh, participants uh, send me their drawings and they put them um, in the Facebook group of the Center for Personal and Social Transformations. But um, uh, uh, I keep confidential uh, uh, the author of each drawing. We don't um, show who is the author of each drawing and um, uh, we never make a uh, um, video recording because issues which people talk about uh, during these online meetings can be very personal and uh, uh, we, uh, I prefer to keep it uh, confidential and to follow my, uh, to the safety reasons also, not to harm anybody with uh, this material getting public. So uh, would anybody uh, like to share something, maybe impressions, maybe um, anything? I appreciate a lot to do it, but I prefer not share my, but, but I, I can show you, I can show you. I, I, I think I, you put some colors uh, later because I don't have any here. I like it a lot to to do to do this this activity. And I thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Andrea. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, now it was very short, and during online meetings, uh, uh, 
uh, I make um, the entrance to the practice. And uh, I usually started with um, uh, this uh, well-known uh, um, exercise of, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how it is in English, maybe Katerina knows of mm -hmm. this um, uh, butterfly um, um, breathing. Breathing, uh, and it is like hug of black butterfly. It is very well known exercise from um, uh, the USA, I guess. Uh, why I do it is uh, that uh, doing these simple breathing exercises, uh, people uh, calm down and uh, uh, further on uh, we go into uh, uh, different techniques. I have several techniques, not only this. And also it is, um, Mm, very recommended to do such simple breathing um, exercises regularly because uh, um, when uh, uh, you uh, not, um, no one is uh, mm, absolutely safe now. Everybody can get into a situation when uh, uh, the level of uncertainty is too high and everyone can panic. And to be able to help yourself you will uh, remind, you will um, recall this uh, um, a simple exercise only when you practice it regularly. And for migrants, uh, uh, these intense emotions uh, is a very, very big problem. I can uh, feel it by, uh, also by myself. And um, because uh, uh, our basic level of safety is not satisfied, uh, we don't, we, we can't be sure we have um, um, where to live um, uh, the next several months because uh, oh, we don't usually own a, um, a real estate where we went. Uh, and for me, it is a very, um, it is very difficult situation because the whole of my life I owned apartments in which I lived and now um, I live uh, somewhere, even if I rent, it is not mine and it is very difficult. And um, every situation which when uh, something goes uh, not as I planned can destabilize me. And it is not only about me, it is uh, uh, about many migrants. This um, <clears throat> feeling of being stabilized is very fragile and destabilize uh, uh, migrants is very easy. That is why I offer these uh, very simple techniques and I offer to do these uh, breathing exercises regularly for migrants. Uh, maybe anybody else uh, would like to share? Okay. <laughs> Nobody wants to share in public. Uh, <laughs> I can share. Yeah, I can share, but uh, I sent to Marisa. I sent to Risa, but I can share to Irina. I don't know why. Ah, Rustica. Uh, yes. Oh, I can see that Diana is showing her drawing. Yeah. But I made mistake. Instead of inside the hand, I was putting those objects. Uh, uh, outside the hand so it is it must be some uh, psychological explanation uh, it is not a mistake you preferred to fill in uh, um, the world around you because the hand is an image uh, which is about your identity and uh, uh, when you feel uh, a bit um, emotionally destabilized the first thing uh, which uh, is important to do is uh, a return to body to feel the uh, um, shape of the body and to breathe and to orient in uh, uh, the space. And in your case, uh, um, you can add in, um, uh, inside also what you wish. Uh, Rustika, and what was your impression? I don't know, I just uh, send the image to uh, Risa. Uh, okay. Barisa? Would you mind to send my picture because I can't? Huh? Uh, I don't know. Do you want me to? In the chat, in the chat, in the okay, chat room. Do you want me to share it with uh, everybody? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. 
I love this. I love this team. Uh, I just don't know how to share it with uh, everybody. I already downloaded the picture. Yeah. Um, how okay. I put it to everyone. So everyone okay. can see your picture. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe I can share right now. Please. Yeah. Please do. Yes. She, Irina? Oh, still. Yep. Irina? Are you able to see your picture? Yeah, still, still working. Yeah, still working. I can't see it. Why not putting uh, the picture on your screen? Rustika. Can you just do it? Yes. Ah, no. Uh, be probably she because Rustika has uh, special effects, we can't see it. Yeah, but uh, she put on the chat. Maybe if you see her on the chat, she put a photo. Ah. Uh, okay. Send the picture to everyone, please. Yeah, yes, sure. I yes, send sure. in the chat room. Okay. Yes, sure, I send by, by chat. In the chat room. Oh, I, I, unfortunately, I can't see it. But um, maybe you can say what were your impressions. Did you feel something? Uh, did it help you to realize something? These simple geometric figures. Uh, like, uh, what is the name of? Uh, um, like um, mm, like uh, S letter, S letter, something like that uh, around my finger. And I put the color of uh, orange from the Sabilo boss to the, all this inside is something. Uh, I feel like a relax and I feel like uh, mm, release my stress, something like that. No, oh, thank you. I'm so glad uh, that it worked with, uh, for you. Yes. Uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, uh, now I would like uh, to invite uh, the next presentation by Katerina Bondari. Thanks for your presentation, Irina. So good resilient technique that I saw many times in a social media also with our group that I well known as a personal uh, a lot of these people so just my uh, my thesis will be more uh, theoretical I think but uh, just just a second I need to share uh, just a little bit I wasn't prepared so quickly. Um, okay. Um, um, I need a little bit more time, sorry. I decided that I can uh, show my online presentation, but I need uh, to- We can see. You can see? Yes, uh, uh, I can see your screen. Oh, finally, I'll oh, just, just a second. Mm. Okay. I prepare a really big presentation, but I just want to highlight it. The most important key point, a key, key point questions. Uh, that uh, I'm also a professor from Ukraine, but now I worked in Germany. And um, uh, our research about digital transformation of training in higher education, based on data-driven decision-making in the work case. And uh, I want to tell about some background that we have now in Ukraine. I know that you watch news, but still we need to highlight our situation in our high education system. So first of all, um, during the military invasion from Russia, 
um, the number of, of big universities in Kyiv, Kharkiv, Mariupol, Mykolaiv were, were shelled or destroyed. In the picture, you see Mykolaiv University that was destroyed in August. And uh, in the same time, just uh, 8%, 7.65% uh, of uh, students answered in a big uh, research um, in Ukraine that uh, those university was temporarily displaced. So uh, universities, in, all universities in Ukraine still works in the same place that it was before. And it was big research that I want to highlight it. It was 12,000 uh, students uh, that take, took part in their focus groups. And they answered uh, many, many questions about uh, high education. In the same times, five days ago, press breaking uh, and our Minister of Education highlighted that uh, uh, we have a big uh, percent of students this year. It's um, more, um, uh, it's more as if it was 10 years ago. So the students prefer staying in Ukraine and studying in Ukraine uh, and uh, it's, uh, also now uh, very important for um, all universities in Ukraine have a good level of education because a lot of expectations from uh, students like uh, stakeholders. And accordingly, uh, one of priorities in uh, the conditions uh, of um, uh, host hostilities is to preserve the quality of higher education in Ukraine. As I said, uh, the research by Frederick Nauman Foundation for Freedom uh, was about uh, um, a level of education from April to uh, August uh, in our universities. And uh, I need to highlight that 95% of students are aimed at obtaining higher education and just 5% of students affirmatively answered that education is uh, meaningless. So uh, this indicates uh, the priority of quality of education for students. And um, also uh, in a big data decision-making, uh, we need to analyze as uh, their uh, drop out, uh, just uh, uh, reasons why students don't like a uh, system of higher education, those uh, uh, curricul uh, curricular uh, syllabuses, and etc. And you see the report by uh, uh, colleagues um, about big education and data. It's an academic problem, motivational problem, psychological problem, and financial problems. So a university um, should analyze this data because it's like our uh, most important thing that uh, we need to analyze our level of education, conditions, and, and et cetera. And uh, I also want to highlight it, uh, how learned Ukrainian student. 73% um, um, uh, study in online format, uh, format. and uh, synchronous learning is a 55% uh, percent of students. So just they use Zoom like we now, and uh, they just work in their lectures and also colloquiums uh, without any uh, asynchronous learning. Uh, 80, uh, oh, sorry, 18% um, uh, use asynchronous learning and a hybrid online format use as 23% um, of students. And just 3% uh, haven't any format of learning. It was in April and May when we ended the year, academic year. And uh, um, this creates a request for crisis management and decision-making based on analysis of the quality of online teaching in a wartime. 
And everything indicates that it is especially important for studies to receive quality of education as a condition for their um, stable future on the one hand. On the other hand, for the teachers, there is a need for flexible transformation of teaching. Uh, to access this quality of online teaching in wartime, it's especially important to develop tools that are sensitive to feedback. At the same time, uh, we should, should convene, uh, the, there is a large, okay, I can see my text, I cannot see my text. Uh, there, um, uh, for proceeding large amounts of feedback data and uh, we need some uh, test, new testing for our educational system. And also, uh, I want to share the result, how many students doesn't want to leave higher education, that it was uh, in uh, uh, last year, 25% uh, percent of students uh, have a lot of jobs as it, uh, they choose their own profession. Seven percent uh, uh, students uh, they answered that they change the profession in the first opportunity and speci specialization. And ten percent of students uh, highlighted that just they choose this profession because they have a lot of pressure from those parents. So it's. Um, a drop out of our educational motivation and about motivation of students and we need to analyze also this data and uh, in our research we have a uh, key point question first key point question uh, is the sensitive multiple type of testing methods uh, to the crisis situations uh, that are valid, reliable, and fair for assisting the quality of teaching in order to improve data, uh, data driven decision making and ethics. And the second research question is what are the ways of anti crisis digital transformation of teaching at the university in the condition of military operations based on decision making and based on survey data? Okay, uh, our project kickoff. Um, our problem statement also we have national agency for higher education that provides recommendation on the views on the current state of testing as a quality of higher education and typical questionnaires for online service however as there is a currently no comp um, comprehensive study or literature review on models of questionnaires and gradient scales for Ukrainian higher education system. And also how looks as this uh, testing, it's uh, uh, 10 uh, um, blocks uh, or types of questions uh, that is contain 54 questions and uh, it's uh, included in the mechanism that proposed the agent uh, was proposed the agency our agency uh, that uh, support higher education and this questionnaire was implemented from american educational system and contains an assessment of university policy on quality of evaluation and also educational professional programs and should contain generalized assessment and etc i doesn't want to highlight all points it's a uh, uh, five point like Likert scale is it recommended to our students? And uh, hypothesis statement. Um, however, the questionnaire questionnaire on uh, this uh, that was proposed and uh, uh, we try to use like a pilot, uh, but uh, we have a very interesting result. Um, Thirty-one percent of uh, students didn't complete into the uh, testing. Uh, Nineteen percent ignored the test, and uh, twenty-seven percent of uh, students uh, answered very quickly uh, without any result. How we analyze this? Uh, 
um, result, uh, the, uh, the time of this testing was so small, just four, six minutes for 54 uh, questions, it's too quickly. And that is why we modify the questionnaire and uh, um, just left 20 questions and uh, uh, one uh, open-ended question. And uh, um, we also have results. Uh, how looks our data? Yeah, and it was uh, 689 students uh, of uh, MR and BAR degrees. Uh, it, um, it was the uh, teachers, different um, tracks in our university, of different tracks in our university. And um, how looks our research? I doesn't want to concentrate uh, because it's also include in thesis and the results. Okay, um, the level, when we analyze um, the answers was uh, really surprised surprised us because we uh, didn't expect um, that our students uh, have so high expectation from our uh, education and uh, the students um, answer they need they, they need discipline uh, for those professional activity so very high level of scale and also they um, uh, answered that they all discipline are logical and uh, it's a good level of um, uh, studying uh, and the, in the second part of testing, we analyze the style of teaching by professors. And uh, also uh, we, uh, we have a high level of uh, professor staff uh, style uh, of education. But yeah, you can see in the slides. But the results uh, and perspectives of objectives. Uh, like in a report of high education through the eyes of students, I just translate like it was in Ukrainian. Um, the students rate high education very highly. In our study, we also have uh, students range from uh, four points to four points point, uh, point seven. And um, it's um, very good, like uh, our students uh, proud that they study in university, but it's a barrier for database based analysis. And we cannot see the weakness part of our work and our system in the university. And we need to understand what uh, type of inter interventions we need for teachers, for professors, like uh, training for teachers and digital transformation and uh, what kind of support of student we need. And uh, so we just work now with the uh, next uh, type of uh, modification of this testing because it's not so good for testing in the crisis time. And also uh, when we include this testing, we need to highlight that uh, a lot of question, uh, questions concentrate on the personality of professor but it's um, uh, we, if we analyze ethics, it's not so good because we need to change the style of teaching, but we cannot change, especially in a crisis, a reality personality of professor and those characteristics. So uh, we work with, with in the future in our future work. We concentrate in a more interesting questions and different scales that analyze the level of um, learning in our uh, in our educational system, and it is like a future proposal. Uh, 
but in the end uh, we need to okay i just ended my uh, my speech uh, we need to highlight that our student besides we have a really awful conditions now so interested in studying in higher education and it's a really interesting like a result of our work thanks for your attention Oh, thank you, Katerina, for your interesting uh, presentation concerning Ukraine, and thank you for your research uh, on Ukraine. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I think we will have questions uh, uh, a bit later to uh, the whole uh, um, block of presentations. And now I would like to invite uh, Rustika uh, from Indonesia. May I share my presentation, Barisa? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Oh. Did you see my presentation? Yes, yes, but we see the last slide. Yes. Okay. So now, now the beginning. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, all my colleagues. Thank you for Marisa and uh, Irina and all the uh, seminar teams. Uh, let me introduce myself again. Uh, my name is Rustika Nur Istikomah. Uh, I'm actually I'm a, an expertise of big data analytics for over 10 years. Now uh, I'm here to present the research entitled Intermedia Agenda Setting on Indonesian Government's Political Policy Message in a Pandemic. Big Data Analysis of the Relation of online media agenda and Twitter in January to April 2022 on the topics of the relocation of Indonesia's capital city. Yeah. Okay. Let's start by the issue appeared in 2019. At the time, Jokowi wanted to relocate its capital city to East Kalimantan. So you can imagine Jakarta as the uh, busiest uh, modern city in Indonesia versus East Kalimantan with trees everywhere as the Amazon of Indonesia. So you can imagine relocation from Jakarta, the big city to the Amazon of Indonesia. So at the time, you know, at that time in 2019, this issue resulted in many responses from public, especially from millennial generation. They appreciated this issue with their emotion in the form of surprise, anticipation, and trust on social media. And of course, positive sentiments dominated these topics because you know that the Jokowi idea is like a brilliant idea something like this so uh, netizen or um, millennial gener generation was very happy wow it's good something like that but in 2022 finally parliament passed the relocation bill into law I think it was a crucial and controversial decision because at the time we were still facing the pandemic situation, mm, actually until now. And in line with this, so I think this was the time I began to conduct my research. I focus on the government political policy message on how they socialize the crucial message. Is it successful or failed? 
how's the government communication message? Is it good or not? So we can check the into intermedia agenda setting between online media and the social media focus on Twitter. So this is uh, the introduction. The background is like the, the topic of the relocation of Indonesia's capital city from Jakarta to East Kalimantan is one of the crucial controversial issue since it is related to the context of government decision made during the pandemic. So during the pandemic. And at the time, you know that when the issue is raised, mainstream media began to play a position through their account on social media or via website to attract the attention of public who really need quick information about the relocation. And social media is growing rapidly with the trend of people connecting to find out the latest, more updated issues talk about the relocation. So the question is, is there any intermedia agenda setting or issue transfers from online media to Twitter on the government communication message on the topic of relocation in Indonesia capital city and vice versa? And the study was conducted to know intermedia and agenda setting or issue transfer from online media to Twitter on the government communication message on the topic of relocation in Asia capital city and vice versa. And when we talk about the intermedia agenda setting, so we have to look at the agenda setting theory. Agenda setting theory is about any topics are being discussed in the, in the news or news trends and how this affects public opinion. And agenda setting has functioned to revert to ability of media with repeated news or emerge the importance of an issues in the public's mind. And when we talk about intermedia agenda setting, there are many uh, people research about intermedia agenda setting. For example, Walgrave, it said that intermedia agenda setting is dynamic and routine news diffusion where coverage on one media platform can be influenced by the agenda of other media. And Fargo research about the intermedia agenda setting model in the election. So the context is election in uh, America. It said that media agenda is highly homogeneous and reciprocal. Online partisan media plays a major role in, in the entire media agenda. So this is the presidential election when Trump versus uh, Clinton. And the research from Sue and Bora, Asur, Fargo, and Guo, it said about the two-way relationship between social media and online media. Their agenda are influenced each other. So I use the methods, correlational quantitative research with the big data analysis, news and conversation related to government policies, and I do, uh, I use the two tools to analyze this. The tools are intelligent media analytics and social media analytics. And what is findings? Ah, this is the result of public response report regarding the, the relocation. Uh, you can see to the graph, uh, this is the dashboard of the relocation in online media. You can see what is the highest or the best coverage of media, like the top 10 media. What is the top person who covered by media when talk about the relocation? You can see the sentiments and you can see the exposure, uh, January, February, March, April, and etc. And the relocation has a huge response 
in the online media and in the social media. In online media, you can imagine more than 25,000 articles or reports in online media in Indonesia. So it's so big issues. And how is in the social media? Okay, the issue of relocation responded by almost 180,000 conversation on social media. And what is the big news? The big news was the first month, namely January, when the discourse, the discourse on the capital city began to appear in the media. And this is the graphic about the relocation national capital, capital city theme in five social media platforms. So you can see this is uh, the exposure from the TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And Twitter, the blue one, dominate all the conversation. And this is the hashtag or the trending issues about the relocation. It said Ibu Kota Baru. Ibu Kota Baru is the new capital city. And this is like a Nusantara. Nusantara is the name of the new capital city. And you can see this is the active account. In the January, more than 40,000 active account. And this is in the February, it's like a, uh, slow and uh, more be just only 20,000 and this is the user created uh, time so every account has a user like uh, when the they use the account so you can see this is the like the new account in this uh, issue more response to this uh, relocation issue in the Twitter. And this is the engagement history. So this is the around the 1,000 1, and 160,000 conversation from more than 46,000 active account on Twitter. And this is uh, the score by sentiment and region. This is the Accumulation from the Twitter, Rika. Uh, Rustica, we lost sound from you. We are losing your your sound. Uh, maybe Rustica is disconnected. Rika. Um, we see slide, but we don't hear you. Good. Yes. Okay. So again. Okay. And this is the topic score regarding the national capital city on the Twitter. You can see this is the hashtag like uh, IKN is like Ibu Kota Negara or and this is Tola Ibu Kota Baru. It say that uh, the netizen resistance to the relocation. And this is similar to and this is like a oligarch project, something like that. And more than 25,000 reports in online media in Indonesia. And this is in the, in the uh, social media. 
And you can see this is the restricted username, like a CNN Indonesia, Koran Tempo, Tempo.co, Mas Piyu Aja, and Hidayat Nur Wahid. This is the person, and this is the media. So when we talk about the intermedia agenda setting, so the online media or mainstream media still drive the issue in the social media. And this is the total post comparison. You can see uh, the blue one is the comment and the green one is the posting. And this is the top account with comment and reply. And this is top account retweeted the issue, okay? So you can compare, is it, uh, there is an intermedia agenda setting between online media, this is online media, and the social media, okay. So you can look at the January, this is the highest uh, issues in the online media and the Twitter. So in the Twitter, almost 150 conversation. So the first level agenda setting emphasize the frequency of the news media mentioning and including objects that are considered important for the community. When that issue is raised, something like that, raised, yeah, it means that the issue is important, even though the audience might have different opinions, yeah. The first level agenda is characterized by the impact of media agenda on the public agenda related to selling issue, political figures, and others concerned object. The agenda of online media or social media will appear if there is an increase in the number of reports and conversation about the certain issue. So you can see in January, February, and March in the Online news is still higher, but in the social media, just only in January and then less in February, March, and April. And you can see online media as a representation of main, mainstream media means the main reference source or preference for social media user. Besides that, online media drive the issue on social media. And this is the second level agenda setting or issue level between online media and Twitter on the topic of the relocation. This is the sentiment in the news, online news, and this is the sentiment in the Twitter. So you can compare this and this, uh, the black one, this is the neutral of the issues. The, the blue one is the positive sentiment and the red one is the negative sentiment. And this is in the Twitter. So you can see this is the red one. So this is the negative side in social media. So we can see that the accumulated sentiment differ from each other quantitative. In the first st statement of the relocation bill into law on January 2022, neutral sentiment occupies the highest percentage in online media, neutral. While in the social media issues is filled with the negative sentiment. The sentiment that appears in the online media, see, provide a neutral framing. There was 45.16 natural, followed by 32.16 positive sentiment and 22.68 negative sentiment. But on Twitter, negative sentiment dominates uh, the natural and positive sentiment. Namely, 36.32% for negative sentiment, followed by natural sentiment as much as 31.6%. 96 and positive sentiments as much as 31.1990%. And this analysis result from the online media and Twitter show the general trend in the movement of the agendas of the two medias in time series. So this is the time series, the, the same time series. Okay. And why 
why the in the Twitter there is a dominant uh, there were dominant in the negative sentiment. So we can use we can see in the engagement in the social media. The resistance of the public opinion on the topic of relocation in Indonesia capital city gained the highest engagement on the Twitter. So this is, you can see this is this from CNN Indonesia and the framing is negative. And this is from uh, CNN Indonesia. This is from Indonesia. And this is from uh, Ridwan Kamil. It's, uh, is a West Java governor, and this is President Joko Widodo. This is from the media. This is from media, and the negative reaction raised by Twitter user indicate that this policy is not right now, because the government is still not ready to carry out the relocation of national capital in the pandemic situation. Intermedia agenda setting is driven by social media. <coughs> of the media and figure or influencer. So the media is like CNN, Tempo, Koran Tempo, TV One, TV One, Koran Tempo, Koran Tempo, Tempo, CNN, CNN, CNN. And the figure or influencer or the, like Mas Piu, Ridwan Kamil, Joko Widodo, Muhammad Saididu, Alin Yowana, uh, so you can see there are two types of influencers account. The real one, the real one is like the Joko Widodo, Ridwan Kamil, Muhammad Said Didu. And the fake one is like Mas Piu. Mas Piu account is like a fake account because we don't know who, who are Mas Piu. And you know, Fake accounts sometimes they have more followers than the real account. And in Indonesia, sometimes the fake account like Maspio is like a trusted by netizen than the, the real account. Uh, and we can compare again the news exposure and the sentiment analysis from uh, two uh, platforms online media and the social media. So relocation is still crucial issue on the online media. So this is the crucial issue in the online media, but minimum gain in social media response after that need from February, March, and April is so less care. So netizen had given less care to this issue anymore. So finally, the conclusion for my research is the first one. Online media tend to give a neutral framing of government statement, while Twitter tends to give a negative framing. For note, the Twitter platform in Indonesia, actually when we talk about the politics, is filled with accounts of opposition groups as a continuation of the polarization in the presidential election 2014 and 2019. Sentiment on Twitter will be positive if there is a positive narrative and a conditioning effort, and we call it like a buzzer. And the, con the, this, uh, the second conclusion are the increasing number of internet users influences the agenda setting process by setting agendas online, seen by others as you name salience. All right, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Rustika, a lot for your presentation. It is uh, more than impressive. Uh, we will discuss uh, uh, um, this part of presentations after um, the second, uh, the next presentation. Uh, I would like to invite Diana Vukamanovic. So thank you, Irina. Um, hello to everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. So I will start to share my screen. So first, I should uh, 
share my screen. Uh, so I hope that you can see my presentation right now. Yes. Okay, so uh, the title of my short presentation is the role of history in self-constitution of an antagonistic leadership. I'm using concept of uh, Michel Foucault to explain how, how, uh, how one of the most powerful leaders in the world uh, is mapping uh, key elements of his leadership by using political narrative that is obviously intended to justify choice of antagonistic means in politics. To be more precisely, I am uh, trying to describe how Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to change and influence culture of memories, of historical memories, in order to articulate and elaborate aim of, aims of his expansionist war affair. So, as I already said, I am using the concepts of uh, French uh, philosopher um, or socialist uh, so sociologist uh, Michel Foucault, uh, uh, who was uh, presenting his lectures during eighties uh, in a series of uh, lectures. But I'm using one particular uh, concept uh, that is the. Uh, um, so-called courageous truth-telling speech. Uh, he's uh, uh, using uh, the practices of ancient Greco-Roman world of this courageous truth-telling uh, uh, speech, uh, namely of Parasia, that is uh, widely used uh, even today. Parasia etymologically, as Foucault explained, means to say everything, to speak freely, to speak courageously. And Foucault explains that parasia implies not only freedom of speech, but the obligation of the speaker to speak the truth for the common good, even at personal risks. So I am using one case study, one particular speech that was made by uh, President Putin on February 21st, and look at the date, that is the three, day, three days before uh, uh, special, as he called it, special military operation or invasion of Ukraine had started. So uh, he's uh, in this public speech, uh, which was lasting for one hour, uh, he's using more than 7,000 words to explain what has happened in Russia and in its surroundings uh, during one century ago. Uh, and uh, uh, one analyst, uh, namely uh, his of Serbian origin, Branko Milanovic, but he's uh, the, the professor in New York, uh, he made the first-hand analysis of Putin's speech, and he's describing as Jacuzzi style of uh, speech, meaning that Putin was using historical revision and historical reinterpretation uh, for his personal accusation of uh, Russian leadership and also of uh, leadership of some other countries. So uh, as Milanovic put it, Branko Milanovic, uh, that will be in my references, uh, Putin is using, is describing three historical betrayals of Russia. And Putin is starting from 1917, from the beginning of the last century, the previous century, and uh, he is accusing the Bolsheviks of having arbitrarily surrendered va vast Russian territories to former Soviet republics. He is telling more particularly that first Lenin, then Stalin, then Khrushchev have ga given some parts of Russian historical territories to Ukraine uh, for no particular reasons. And uh, we can see during that speech that he is uh, using multiple e events from history uh, 
that have multiple causes and have multiple meanings with one single aim to elaborate uh, contemporary Russia in today's uh, position. And uh, from 1970s, from Bolsheviks, he is jumping to the beginning of 1990s during the breakup of USSR, and he is also accusing the uh, then leadership of the Communist Party of the USSR for uh, making a strategic and historical mistakes of giving up of, of the uh, Russian territories and uh, he is making reinterpretation of the breakup of the USSR from nowadays perspective according to his uh, antagonistic uh, military aims. And uh, from 1990s, he's jumping to, to nowadays, uh, to the present situation, and he's interpreting uh, the situation with the uh, NATO environment, uh, and uh, more particularly uh, the, the situation in Ukraine. And he said that Russia wanted to uh, develop a cordial friendship relations with USA and with NATO, but uh, uh, these two entities have treated Russia as an enemy and started to prepare Ukrainian territory as a theater of potential military operation against Russia. As I said, uh, he stated all of this publicly, this speech is uh, available even now, and he made it three days be before decision was made by him and by Russian Federation to start invasion against Ukraine. So you can see how he is using typical historical uh, interpretation or uh, revisionist interpretation of m uh, multiple e events uh, during the Russian uh, or European history. And uh, he is uh, uh, making uh, sentimental, uh, 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 sentimental uh, public announcement. He's using sentimental words, which is so typical for Parasia, for so-called uh, courageous speak. So I'm quoting his word. Of course, we cannot change past events, but we must at least admit them openly and honestly without any reservation or politicking. So he is using this Parisian uh, style of uh, talking and he is uh, uh, presenting himself as honest speakers. He's saying, I'm not trying to put the blame on anyone, but he's blaming also on Bolshevik communists and uh, NATO and USA and Ukrainian leadership. So he's say, saying, the only thing I would like to say today is that this is exactly how it was. It is a historical fact. So he's putting emphasis that what he is talking right now about uh, distant history is a historical fact, that he is in the possession of that history. And uh, what we can see is uh, that uh, he is preparing platform for uh, for forthcoming invasion. But of course, three days ago, no one would know that uh, he is planning such. Uh, I would not say courageous, but such a shocking movement. And uh, he is preparing the the space for his antagonistic uh, movements and uh, what we can see from this speech that uh, this is uh, his uh, personal uh, trial to self-constitute and present himself as an ethical leader who is openly telling what he is that he is in the possession of the historical truth and he is conveying it freely and courageously to his compatriots, to, to the citizens of Russia and to the whole world, Orbe and Orbe, the way that uh, popes are doing. Uh, so we can see this genesis, this evolution within just three days, uh, what was quoted that was stated by President Putin on 21st of February, but suddenly 
three days later, on February 24th, he is publicly announced start of, as he called it, special military operation against Ukraine to protect the people that are subjected to abuse, genocide from the Kiev regime and to demilitarize and even denazify Ukraine. So it is such a sudden jump, unexpected uh, interpretation when you compare his speech three days, uh, three days uh, before and this new vocabulary, which is really offensive, which is unexpected and which is really surprising. So you can see how a political leader is making, is preparing the, the, the platform, is preparing the uh, political narrative for his aggressive uh, movements against Ukraine. And it was uh, done quite suddenly within a time span of three days with complete and uh, offensive uh, change in uh, vocabulary. So what we can see that uh, uh, Putin uh, is using all elements of uh, uh, this uh, old ancient truthful uh, uh, style of uh, speaking uh, but uh, by reinterpreting this historical past Putin is trying to implement influence historical trajectories uh, historic future with the use of hostile offensive means and he's using also uh, the 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 one uh, crucial element of parasia of this truthful uh, speaking that is the risks he is taking the risk he is intentionally choosing the policy of brinkmanship policy of calculated risk by pursuing a series series of dangerous steps to the brink of war and uh, he is trying to present this as he called it a special military operation which is aggressive military invasion of Ukraine as self evident historically correct fact, truthful and inevitable maneuver that should be accepted as an act of truthful reason for the war causus belli. So you, you can see how he is uh, trying to present himself as a person, as a leader who is courageously explaining that he is in the possession of historical truth. But all what he has done, uh, uh, we can see that uh, he, uh, the, the Russian president uh, Putin, is misusing all elements of parasia, of truthful telling, merely as a rhetorical device. He has no interlocutor. He is presenting his historical views on TV, uh, from TV screen. No one is uh, uh, able to, to correct him. Putin is not successful in convincing that his motives are ethically grounded. He's just one in a um, many uh, of politicians who are endlessly trying to reinterpret and change history. And we can conclude with this short analysis of his uh, one uh, public speech that P Putin is misusing historical narratives without adequate degree of reflexibility reflexivity of complex international contextual power dynamics. This is critical aspect of his leadership. I just want to remind you how his historical views are really important. Uh, the, Irina probably knows the best uh, that he, after this invasion has started, uh, he nominated uh, one uh, the, the politician and uh, historical writer, namely uh, Vladimir Medinsky, who was the ex-minister of culture as the chief negotiator with uh, Ukraine. So uh, uh, I want to emphasize how important it is that we concentrate ourselves on uh, President Putin's uh, the, uh, views on recent history to read his uh, mind, if I may say so, to, to see uh, the whole picture of the world that he is presenting. And uh, just to emphasize also the fact that uh, this chief negotiator 
negotiator Medinsky uh, was a member of a presidential commission that was established 10 years or more than 10 years ago by president then president Medvedev that was presidential commission uh, for countering uh, of a false interpretation of history that was officially called like that and we can see how politicians and historians were changing the perception of the world not only of the of the past history but also uh, of the uh, re reinterpretation and the contemporary views on the future history development during the last decade and i think that we should concentrate uh, the, the themselves on, on, on this uh, historical interpretation uh, to be able to predict what would be the uh, final outcome of this uh, terrible war in Ukraine because an analytic, analytical uh, view is that will uh, be the long war that will uh, unfortunately not end up uh, really soon. And uh, I just wanted to explain with my short analysis that Putin is using all elements of parasia of this courageous, openly free speaking, and he is misusing his position of the one of the most powerful men in the world to uh, present himself as courageous, uh, freedom loving uh, as 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 uh, the the truth telling uh, leader uh, and uh, as Foucault would say he is even using this uh, parasiastic game of in the form of the fight for life and death he is taking the risk and uh, he is misusing the history uh, to achieve his uh, final uh, antagonistic uh, hostile ends so, thank you. Uh, thank you, Diana, for your presentation with um, such a clear um, position. Uh, I really appreciate it because I understand that there can be different uh, opinions in um, different parts of the world. Uh, and now I would like to invite a discussion uh, over um, this part of our seminar, uh, starting from uh, the presentation of uh, Natalia Kajakaro, if I, uh, I'm not mistaken. We have several presentations and we can have discussion upon them now. If somebody has a um, comment or question, uh, Alexander uh, had the request for presentation, and I think Katerina shared this presentation, her presentation in in, uh, in the chat. For me, presentations of this part of our meeting were um, extremely interesting. And um, I will take on a uh, um, chance to um, listen to them again uh, uh, on the YouTube channel. But I would also like to invite a uh, uh, discussion because it is uh, um, really tremendous that we are gathered uh, today now here in one space in uh, in the cloud somewhere uh, being on three continents from um, uh, so many different countries from italy brazil indonesia bosnia and herzegovina moldova ukraine uh, i consider myself as ukraine uh, germany and serbia and uh, uh, all of us uh, speak the language uh, which is not uh, um, the native uh, language for us and we don't mind mistakes mispronunciations uh, the most important thing for us is to understand each other and i would even uh, dare to say that uh, english language doesn't um, belong to great britain anymore it is uh, the language which is used uh, for understanding around the world uh, because it is instrumental
So any comments? May I just say that I am really a admirer of all this um, presentation, looking at the, this intersection between social representation, communication, social memory, identity. And uh, I also am admire, and also the communication in a complex way, not just the uh, printed uh, newspaper or online, but and also with the, this new tool for analyzing this, um, let's say, uh, recently had the new way of communicating. So uh, I find very, I, I think that until I, this uh, series will continue, <laughs> I will be take part of it because it is very, very interesting each time. And um, no, there are, you know, this dimension that you, Irina, address, looking at the projective tools, a different way of communicating, um, this interest for big data, for example. So there is the crossing, this um, attention to the history, to the rhetorical device. And I am very admired that uh, Ukraine people uh, in, the, in the current condition, after so many months of this terrible situation, have this dignity no, to present as the world would be the same, no, to share their study, their reflection. I think that uh, no dictator may never uh, win the war in this country with this kind of people is, you know, I really think that you are becoming an example of the dignity for the whole world. And so sometimes I feel guilty that, for example, I, uh, I had this experience to move from a bed and breakfast another to from a day to another, even from a room another of the same BNB in the same uh, in two days because uh, too many tourists here. And I really feel felt guilty during all these five months of relocation, thinking at the courage of these people under the bomb. And they continue to make, uh, let's say, uh, analysis, study, contribution. This also the study has been presented on the on the university student. I don't know how you have been elevated as a, <laughs> as population to be so with this high dignity. If I think that your president was an actor before, no, <laughs> his life had to, let, to teach him how to cope with this situation. And he even rejected to move abroad when the American won't, in a certain sense, save him in a quick way. Hmm. I still remember when you too rejected to move out of Ukraine at the beginning. So but this is just, uh, I don't want to put all the attention on Ukraine because all the presentation has been uh, very interesting, but it is interesting the way in which you have started to build this uh, network of uh, people that uh, indeed, as uh, Riza told, seem uh, genuinely interest, not for strategic career purpose, not for having another publication, or, or although you, you always valorize the contribution of publishing them, but uh, there is a genuine interest in the exchange. So thank you for having invented this network. Oh, thank you, Anna Maria, for your um, comments. It is great. Uh, I'm really sorry for those people who are still under bombing. Uh, I also, I'm also sure that it is not uh, possible to conquer Ukraine, but uh, destructions and uh, um, deaths uh, are tremendous and official statistics will never show us uh, the real state. Uh, 
-hmm. I understand why uh, they prefer not to show it now, but I'm sure that even after the war, it will not be shown. We, uh, we will never know how many people were killed. Uh, and um, all the rest, I even don't want to mention now. Uh, I'm very grateful for um, um, solidarity of uh, international um, uh, partners, uh, I call partners and colleagues and friends. Uh, in the beginning of the war, I received uh, um, a lot of invitations from uh, scientists uh, from different countries and uh, also from those who are present here. Uh, also from Alexander and uh, uh, so many people, scientists from social representations network supported me during my way, starting from uh, when I crossed the border, I uh, um, I didn't feel fear inside, but as, as uh, soon as I crossed the border, my nervous system uh, started to react and I phoned to Sylvie Graf. Then uh, uh, Sarah Begazzi offered me her apartment for three um, weeks. Uh, then uh, Andrea Vintila invited me here uh, for this post program. And then uh, um, Eva Green and uh, Anna Kander and uh, so many other, uh, Adrian Guzman and so many other um, researchers from this network, which you, Anna Maria, created. Um, um, so many people supported me. That is uh, tremendous. I'm very grateful to all of you, and I hope that um, mm, well, this we can't predict uh, how this war will um, go on, but I only hope that uh, um, there will be not uh, so much distractions and uh, that um, nuclear weapons will not be used because it okay. is. Uh, not only about our generation, it's also yeah. about future generations. Sure. But let's move to um, other topics. Uh, 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 the, um, uh, the precious side of our gathering is that um, uh, we um, manage to cover all the most uh, uh, important topics for the current world which is changing uh, which is changing extremely uh, quickly and which is extremely fragile now and uh, um, the researchers who participate in these uh, meetings every year uh, reflect these changes very quickly in uh, their research so today we talked about uh, migration covid-19 war in ukraine political actors and uh, Mm, I showed some techniques and uh, big data analysis uh, uh, was reflected uh, and also social representation parad paradigm uh, 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 is uh, still uh, um, actual and, uh, uh, and uh, it is still applicable for this changing world. Mm, that is um, unbelievable. And uh, I really hope that uh, we will continue. I consider myself, I introduce myself from Ukraine because I don't have affiliation in Europe uh, at present, uh, but uh, uh, I'm head of the board of uh, the non-governmental organization registered in Ukraine. And that is why I consider myself as um, representing Ukraine. <clears throat> so any more comments? or questions to each other. Uh, probably, uh, did Alexander want to ask something? Ah, Alexander uh, is uh, uh, on his move. Uh, he will reconnect uh, later. So uh, shall we continue discussion or shall we move to the next part? <clears throat> 